Welcome back guys, it's your boy Sam and today's video it's a timer. This is the day one of our 100 day code challenge and what we're creating here is a timer. This is a really great project if you want to practice ternary operators, want to practice your string literals and also want to understand how you can use intervals to call functions and set the interval for when that function should be called, especially if you want to call the function multiple times. So that's what we're doing in this project. Leave a like, comment down below if you have any question, and now let's get to it. So what we do here is, you know, I'm gonna give it a title. I'm removing this Rippler here, and I'm gonna put timer. After that, we have a P tag. Inside the P tag, I'll just put 10. You know what, I'm gonna put six. And under the P tag, I'm going to have a button. <laughs> but, oh, wow. Button, inside the button, we'll have an ID of BTN. And also, I'll put an on click. And this is for later down the tutorial. I'm going to call it restart. So yes, that's all for the HTML, but we need to actually give the button a name. So it's restart. Now we can see that. Now we'll go to the CSS, copy that, and that's it. Now for the body, we give it a background color of black. Paste the font family. A display flex a margin zero a height of hundred VH and a line item center a justify content space evenly and yeah now let's get to the p tag because we can't see it so i'm going to give it a color of white run that again now we can see it magically appeared add a font size to it of 50 pixels, give it some border radius, of 100 pixels, give it a height, of 70 pixels, and a width, of 200 pixels. Now I want the text to be aligned. I will put it at center. Just gonna run it so we can see how it looks right now with all this. Looks bigger, looks better. Give it a margin of zero. You know what, I'm going to add a background color to it of white and remove the color. Yep. So that's that for the P tag. Now let's get to the button. For the button, I add a color of black, no justified content. So give it a background color too, of white. Give it a border radius 
of 100 pixels a width of 200 pixels a height of 70 pixels give it a border of none so we can get that border out of there and also I'm going to give it an outline of none because I don't want no outline of it and then text align center also a cursor pointer I'm not for sure the font size has to be changed 45 pixels yep and that's how it looks now so you know what just gonna add some little hover effect because come on we need to give this some hover effect uh, for the hover effect i'll just change the background to opposite the background is going to be black the color is going to be white so now it's time for the javascript so for the javascript i'll start with a constant i'll call this starting point i'll set it to six and then let time set a variable called let time and it's going to be starting point times 60 after that i'll put a constant countdown I'll set it equal to documents dot get element by id and what are we getting by its id we're getting counter and what is counter counter should be this here because the p tag needs an id called counter that's what we're getting by its ID. Now we set interval. And why we're using this set interval is that we wanted to call this function that I'm going to create called counter. I wanted to call it every second. And what is this function going to do? You're going to see now. Because I'm going to create the function. It's called update counter. And this update counter function. And we're going to set a constant minutes. And how do we get the minutes from this time right here? We say math dot floor. And then it takes as its input time divided by 60. So that's how we get the minutes now let seconds and we're using let for seconds because seconds is going to be really variable. it's going to change a lot so the time is going to be modulo 60 because seconds is going to be modulo 60 that means the remainder of time divided by 60 is going to be our seconds and that should make sense and seconds is equal to seconds and now we're using this is an itinerary up. This is a itinerary operator, and what this does is basically is just if and else statement in a different way. So what we're saying right here is that seconds right here, if it's less than ten, I'll we'll put the question mark. We want zero to be added in front of whatever second is. So if second is seven, we want it to be o seven. So that's what we're doing right here. So that's why we say plus seconds and you know when you add a string it comes in front of it and then we say if it's not that's what this is then we just want seconds to be seconds so if it's a 10 we want it to be a 10 if it's a 7 we want it to be 07 that's what we're saying right there the next thing now is we need to say count count the next thing now is we need to say countdown dot inner html and we set that equal to 
we're using this back space right here or this back quotes this back quote is basically going to be our string literals so this is how you do a string literal and then we put minutes in there then we put the colon this is how we want it to display that's what we're using that's what we're using the string literal for and we say seconds So we want the colon, then minutes, we want the minute, then the colon, then seconds, just like it is right here, minute, colon, seconds. And that's that. And now we need to make it reduce, but we don't want it to keep on reducing. We want it to stop whenever it is actually less than zero, or when it's equal to zero. So we say here, this condition, we're using the tenary operator again. We say if time is not equal to zero time is not equal to zero then i want time to be reduced by one every time but if it's equal to zero then i want time to be time so that i want time to be zero and not decremented so that's what we just did right there if i run it why why does it doesn't work is we need to remove this right here so i remove that still works with it but yeah so I removed that and we can see it's actually working right now it worked with it too but it's better it's not there but now the button doesn't work so we need to do something for the button and what I just did for the button here is uh, I said function restart and you are free to actually make this way more functional but I don't want this to be a long video so I just thought about something real easy to do for the restart. So what I'm doing is windows.location.reload. So the page reloads and that's how it restarts. So run this. And here it's going. Click this, it reloads and it starts again. Yeah, so this is day one of our 100 days of code challenge and hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to this channel and that's it. I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving and I'll see you in another YouTube video.